Good afternoon, second graders. Miss Shannon here to read you the story, The Boy Who Cried Wolf. This story is a fable, which means it is a fiction story that is made up, but it teaches the reader a lesson. So I wonder what lesson we will learn from The Boy Who Cried Wolf. Remember our essential question of the week, what can animals and stories teach us? So we are going to see what we learn about in this story. Read to find out what a shepherd boy learns. Before we start, we need to remind ourselves of our comprehension skills we have been practicing. Last week, we learned about plot. Remember that the plot is the events that happen in the beginning, middle, and end of the story. And today we are going to focus on problem and solution. The plot is often about the problem in the story. The solution is how the characters solve the problem by the end of the story. So we're going to be looking for the problem and the solution in our story, The Boy Who Cried Wolf. We will be using this graphic organizer to help organize our thoughts, show us what the problem is, what the steps are to the solution, and what is the final solution. As we read The Boy Who Cried Wolf, think about the plot. Is the plot about a problem, and is there a solution? All right. To tell if there is a problem, you are going to read the beginning of the story and decide if something is wrong. To find the solution, think about how the characters solve the problem by the end of the story. So we usually find our problem at the beginning of the story, second graders. All right, second graders, let's get started. Remember to be thinking about what is the problem and what is the solution as I go. The Boy Who Cried Wolf. Long ago, a shepherd boy sat on a hilltop watching the village sheep. He was not fond of his job. He didn't like it one bit. He would have liked something wonderful to happen, but nothing remarkable ever did the shepherd boy watched the clouds move softly by to stay busy. He saw horses, dogs, and dragons in the sky. He made up stories with these things as characters. And I can see, second graders, that the shepherd boy is so bored. He's got his arm resting on his knee. He's kind of staring off into the distance. He does not look like he is having fun at all. Then one day, he had a better idea. He took a deep breath and cried out, Wolf! Wolf! The wolf is chasing the sheep! The villagers ran up the hill to help the boy. When they got there, they saw no harmful wolf. The boy laughed. Shepherd boy, don't cry wolf unless there really is a wolf, said the villagers. They went back down the hill. That afternoon, the boy again cried out, Wolf! Wolf! The wolf is chasing the sheep! The villagers ran to help the boy again. They saw no wolf. The villagers were angry. Don't cry wolf when there is no wolf, they said. The shepherd boy just smiled. The villagers went quickly down the hill again. Hmm... Wow, I think those villagers are upset that the boy continues to cry wolf when there is no wolf herding the sheep. That afternoon, the boy saw a real wolf. He did not want the wolf to grab any of the sheep. The boy thought the wolf would snatch one of them for a delicious, tasty meal. A sheep would be a big feast for a wolf. He quickly jumped to his feet and cried, Wolf! Wolf! The villagers thought he was tricking them again, so they did not come. That night, the shepherd boy did not return with the sheep. The villagers found the boy weeping real tears. There really was a wolf, he said. The flock ran away. When I cried out, wolf, wolf, no one came. Why didn't you come? A kind man talked to the boy as they walked slowly back to the village. In the morning, we'll help you look for the sheep, he said. You have just learned one of life's important lessons. This is something you need to know. Nobody believes a person who tells lies. 
it is always better to tell the truth. Hmm. I think that we just learned a lesson from this story. And remember that fables teach the reader a lesson. So I think this older villager just told the boy that nobody believes a person who tells a lie. It is always better to tell the truth. That's the lesson that the author is trying to teach us through this story. All right. And now together, we are going to be thinking about what was the problem in the story and what were the steps to the solution. So thinking about this graphic organizer one more time, we are going to work together to fill this out and you are going to need your, your turn practice book, page 66. So please turn to page 66 now in your Your Turn practice book. You may pause this video until you have your materials. And this is what should be on page 66, our graphic organizer with the problem, steps to solution, and the final solution. So let's go back and take a look at our story and see if we can figure out what was the problem at the beginning of our book. Hmm. Well, it told us about a shepherd boy who was watching the village sheep and he did not like his job. Remember how bored he looked staring up at the sky? That sounds like maybe that's part of the problem. He's pretty bored. So I'm going to highlight that information. He was not fond of his job. He didn't like it one bit. He would have liked something for something wonderful to happen, but nothing remarkable ever did. So he was bored. So our problem, the shepherd boy is bored. Now, second graders, you can fill this sentence in under the problem box on your page, but I want you to leave a little bit of extra room because I think in addition to the boy being bored, I think there's more of a problem that we might find if we continue reading. So go ahead and write down the sentence, the shepherd boy is bored in the first box, but leave a little bit of room. Go ahead and pause this video as you write. All right, here we are continuing reading. At the beginning of the story, the boy also calls out wolf, wolf, when there is no wolf. That happens at the beginning of the story as well. And that definitely creates a problem. He did that because he was bored. So I'm going to highlight that information um, where it says he cried out wolf, wolf, the wolf is chasing the sheep. And so I added that to the problem. The shepherd boy is bored. The boy cries wolf when there is no wolf. So the reason he cries out wolf is because he is bored. So uh, that is why we put it up with the problem in the same box. Go ahead and add this sentence in. The boy cries wolf when there is no wolf. And notice how I put the word wolf in quotation marks because that is showing that the character is speaking those words. So quotation marks come at the beginning and end of the word wolf. Pause this video as you continue writing. All right, second graders, now that we've identified the problem, now it's time to see what steps were taken to get to our solution. When the boy cried wolf, the villagers came to help him. And when they got there, they, they saw that there was no wolf. And so they said, don't cry wolf when there is no wolf. They tried to tell him that that is not an okay thing to do. The villagers tried to help solve this problem by telling him not to call wolf. So our first step is the villagers ask the boy not to call wolf when there is no wolf. That is the first step in our solution. But second graders, does the boy listen to them? No, he doesn't. He continues to call out or cry wolf, even after the villagers asked him not to. So let's continue reading on. That afternoon, the boy saw a real wolf. 
He did not want the wolf to grab any of the sheep. The boy thought the wolf would snatch one of them for a delicious, tasty meal. He quickly jumped up to his feet and cried, Wolf, wolf! The villagers thought he was tricking them again, so they did not come. Wow, so our first step was that the villagers asked the boy not to call wolf when there was no wolf, but he continued to cry wolf. So when they heard it a third time, when it was real, and there really was a wolf getting the sheep, the villagers did not come. They did not come to help because they thought he was not being truthful. I can see there where I circled the information. The villagers thought he was tricking them again, so they did not come. So I wrote my second step is when there is a wolf, the villagers do not come to help the boy. Go ahead and write down this sentence and press pause if you need to, and press play when you are ready. And so this brings us to the end of our story. This boy has been crying wolf all, all day and has not been truthful until finally there really was a wolf and no one believed him because he had been lying to the villagers. And so a kind man talked to the boy as they walked slowly back to the village. In the morning, we'll help you look for the sheep, he said. You have just learned one of life's important lessons. This is something you need to know. Nobody believes a person who tells lies. It is always better to tell the truth. So part of the solution is that our shepherd boy finally learns how important his job is and how important it is to tell the truth. Because people will only believe someone who is truthful. They will not believe someone who tells lies. So our solution is the boy realizes his job is important and that he needs to be truthful in order to keep the sheep safe. So I have written it in on my own graphic organizer with the problem, the two steps to our solution, and the solution. Make sure you are writing each sentence with a capital letter and ending with a period. Um, and I will post this underneath our video if you need to write it down or check your work one more time. But again, working hard to determine what the problem is in the story. The problem was he is calling wolf when there is no wolf. And he's bored, his job, he thinks his job is boring. And the steps to the solution are the villagers ask him not to cry wolf when there is no wolf. And the villagers do not come to help when there really was a wolf. And finally, the boy realizing his job is important and that he needs to be truthful. Thanks for working with me, second graders. Great job today.